Right guys, it's Wednesday night, the wife's at work late, the kids are in bed. It's always Wednesdays I'm making a video, so I'm going to start a new thing. Watch Wanker Wednesdays. <laughs> Right guys, so watch review time <clears throat> and it's quite a special video is this for me, it isn't really, but Friday marks the three month anniversary of me being on YouTube. It's Wednesday now, Friday is actually exactly three months time and this is probably when the video is coming out. Totally by accident, I just checked the calendar tonight and I'm like, oh, I better make another video. Uh, I think about four or five of you have watched the Braemont video so far, so cheers guys, it's going down a storm. Uh, today is going to be my state of the collection, because that's exactly what I started with three months ago. So I'm going to go through my collection, it's, it's changed quite a lot in three months. And believe it or not, 2020, New Year's Eve, last year, this year, I said 2020 is going to be the year where I don't buy any watches. Bullshit! 13th of January I bought the Amiga Railmaster, I have loved that and I've missed that, I've really enjoyed that. Uh, that honeymoon period when you go through your watches, I've got a bit of watch wisdom for honeymoon periods at the end, so I'll try not to forget that, it's quite a good one. Yeah, this ex it's changing all the time, I've just got all my watches here, it's like, oh, get in there! But I'm going to make this video as quick as possible, possible because like I say, the wife's out and that means I get to choose what's on telly. So I've got a couple of cold ones in the fridge. I'm going to maybe watch a bit of football or a bloke's movie that I don't get to watch when she's around. Uh, fair play to her at the moment, really, because we're watching Suits on Netflix and not that it matters, but that's pretty cool. So that's my recommendation for what we're watching on TV at the moment. Right. Oh, what am I wearing? Wristwatch check. It, it, oh, I'll take it off. I can never get the angle right. Day day. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, it says Wednesday the, it's the 7th. Wow. Time is flying. That is a nice watch. It's a big 42, it's a big moon face, but once you've worn it and because it is relatively flat, it's quite a nice watch. Is that a keeper? Uh, I think it's got to be, to be honest, if you look at my backstory on the watch. Right, let's flip that camera and look at these watches. I'm really excited for this one. Right guys, here we are. We are going to start at the bottom and work our way up. And these are what I lovingly like to refer to as my shit ones. <laughs> so let's obviously start with this one, the Apple iWatch. I had one in the past. I wore it for eight months straight and it's just such a fantastic bit of kit, but I only ever wear it for jo going jogging or anything like that. Now, it doesn't do anything for me. You know, when you put a watch on, you're like, oh, yes. This doesn't do that, but it's great for jogging, great for tracking where you're going. So, yeah, it's in the collection if you want to call it a watch. Obviously, it is a watch because it's on your wrist. It tells a time. This is... I just bought it just because of what it is. I had a Casio as a kid. Now, anyone that's wearing one of these as an adult and saying, oh, you know, it's, it's got a lot of heritage, you know, you're just kidding yourself and you're being ironic. It's just a watch for kids at the end of the day. I don't particularly like it. I don't ever wear it. I don't think I wear it even as a fancy dress party. Nice having a collection because I had one as a kid, but that's about as far as it goes with that one. Nothing majorly special, although if my eye watch is out of battery, I will wear that for a jog. And it's one of the only cool watches I've got. So, this is Loris Quartz. It is beyond dainty. I think I've measured it in at 26 before now, which, you know, yeah, it looks alright, doesn't it? Would you wear it? I don't think I would. I don't, our last thinks it's disgusting. Truth is, I think my dad picked it up a market because he knew I liked watches. So, <laughs> yeah, he gave me that and, you know, I think I might have worn it around the house one night. I'd never wear it out, although I think it is quite cool. I think it probably is from the maybe the 80s or 90s. So, as far as vintage goes, that's as far as I've ever delved into the vintage market. So, just because my dad gave it me, I keep it really. No more than that. This is... It's not a shit watch actually, I quite like Seasons, I've got a real soft spot for Seasons. This is a 42mm Red Arrows Special Edition and I bought this on the plane coming back from Geneva. So I went to Geneva last year for my birthday and I really wanted a watch. 
obviously I wore a Rolex, they didn't have a Rolex, I couldn't find one I wanted, I nearly got one of those swatch things that you, you know, the plastic watches, but I'd have never worn this. I do wear this from time to time, but more often than not, it's just around the house or doing the gardening or something like that. Yeah, so it's nice, and this fits in quite nicely with these two watches. I told you I had a soft pot for citizens, so this is the watch that I got married in. I bought it because Citizen were a watch company. It's all I could afford at the time. It was £300 and I loved it and I wore it on a regular, regular basis. It's a big boy. I think it's 45. You can tell how thick it is. I think it's made out of bronze. I don't particularly know much about this watch, but it's got plastic pushers there, which are a bit crappy. But this leather strap is absolutely stunning. It really is... Mm stuff and turdy what is up with me i can't say it properly tough and sturdy it's genuinely nice watch and unfortunately it's just such a gigantor now it's just not for me it's too big unfortunately obviously i can't sell it because i won't get much money for it and the wife would kill me this is what she bought me for my one year anniversary i think i were in the window of ernest jones in huddersfield and i just went oh wow look at that blue that's really nice next thing you know she's surprising it with me in a hotel so I actually think this wears a lot better and I think the quality on this is actually right up there. I did a, a video on this because I love it so much recently. If you go watch it, you know, you might get the, the numbers into double figures of people that have bothered to watch that. But I wanted to do it for this watch. It's got a special place in my heart. And this is the Blue Angels Special Edition. So you've got the red arrows for the UK and these guys do it in America. And it's an aviation watch. It is a busy dial. Once you get close up to it, it is a nice looking watch. But it's not for everyone. I think the yellow there is a nice detail. Right, so that's my season collection. What we're on to next? Well, I would say we were on to this, which is the day day that I've been wearing. This is just under a thousand pounds, eight or nine hundred pounds. So it is not a cheap watch by any stretch of the imagination. But as you go higher up the ladder, anything below that just seems not as good. Uh, you know, it's hard to dif differentiate quality from cost sometimes because my best watch is my also my own most expensive one. So this being a lesser expensive watch, you know, it's, is it a lesser quality watch? It is a little bit. The bracelet's not great. It's not great. It's not as good as the other ones. The, you know, the clasp is adequate. It's not amazing, but it is a nice watch. It's got an 80 hour power reserve and it's got a special attachment to me. This is the watch that Coop wore in Interstellar and when I got to name our baby daughter, it was the last one of four daughters, I picked Cooper and the wife went nuts. So I've got a daughter called Cooper and I've got the Cooper watch. So it's gonna to have to stay for now. So without absolutely losing my temper, my camera keeps cutting out on me around the four minute mark. Is that a thing? Does anyone know anything about cameras? Either way, let me know. What I was gonna say is I've got a daughter called Cooper. I can't get rid of this. Unless I don't tell anybody and I just sell it and then I just, you know, that's a good idea. Right, what we're on to next. The Bremont Broadsword. This is a 40mm watch. It wears like a 38, all brushed, inspired by the Dirty Dozen watches. There was uh, 12 companies that created a watch for the British military. And this is, it's a nylon, you know, duplicate of what those watches were. But obviously, in a modern case, a bigger size and it's just a fantastic looking watch military inspired and I have got a granddad that served in World War Two in the army and I've got a dad that served in the Navy as well so yeah I've got a soft spot for this watch but the problem is I prefer a watch on a bracelet more often than not so if Braemont are watching <laughs> I doubt it it would be very nice of you to say <laughs> send me a bracelet and I could wear this watch more because anything that's on a strap I always see it as a lesser value than a watch on a bracelet weird i know because i do change out to straps and to, to nails and stuff but that's just me 38 power reserve cost certified really nice simple looking piece the only thing with the green is it's a bit difficult to match sometimes uh, having said that here we go here's another brain on a green strap so this is the one that i've just made a video of and i've just picked this up i picked this up on the used market on ebay for 1600 quid so pair of Bremonts, which one do you like best? That's probably the better size, but that is just simply stunning. It's got the triptych case, and I'll show you the case back as well. I should have thought about this before putting it on the NATO, so look at that. So as far as case backs go, that is fantastic. It really does look the business. 
So, and I think that looks fantastic on a green NATO as well. So, Bremont, Bremont, I really have got a soft spot for these bad boys, but that's retail the better watch by about 500 pounds so that's next up on the ladder actually these are both very much retail at the same price you get that on the leather and you get this on the bracelet this is high quality everyone knows about Tudor in the watch world oh my word if ever a click got you going this is the click to get you going good lord that will go one more time <laughs> All the way around, all the way around. Go around it at the top. So yeah, this is the Tudor Black Bay Red. Absolutely stunning. Buttery smooth movement. Cost certified. In-house. 70 hour power reserve. Rose gold hands. Oh yeah, that is nice. Thick, top heavy. Scratch magnet. Definite negatives. But on a NATO, I think it looks fantastic. I think I'll be swapping those two NATOs over. And I think it'll just go as well on that. So those two are my strap monsters, my nail monsters, my leather strap monsters, but this bracelet is pretty nifty. It's got a ball bearing clasp. And if you just listen, you can see them there, look. Really, really nice. So can't beat a bracelet, but just for a few days at a time, once or twice a week, I might bang them on a NATO. The thing is, we're working at home at the moment. NATOs are the way to go because laptops are worse than anything else to scratch and then these two bad boys just dragged them across a piece of wood so they'll be battered now which is the best well I've got one from their professional line and I don't know what they call the other line the dress watch line isn't it so I don't know if you'll be able to oh my god look at that that is a problem that is a problem always been a problem look at that and I'm careful with my watches so yeah, scratches up, but I'm trying to get better with this. This one's pretty perfect in a weird way. I've hardly scratched it at all. It's just that mirror finish. It's just so easy to mark. Anyway, guys, this is my watch collection. I ranted off long enough. Let's flip back. Ooh. Right, guys, so that's my watch collection. Some good, some bad. You're never going to win them all, are you? Uh, it's just nice to have watches and, you know, just have a play around with them. So I really enjoy that. And because it's my three-month anniversary on YouTube, I thought I'd treat you to <laughs> a bit of watch wisdom. But first, I'd like to read you out some of the comments that I've got. I'll, I'll be honest, 99.9% .9 of you guys out there that have bothered to make a comment have been super kind, been really encouraging, and it's been great. But there's a few guys out there <laughs> so the first one, no laughy face after it or anything like that, he's just put, your arms are too skinny, that's all. So I've obviously been complaining about a watch being too big, but it's not the watch's fault, it's my fault for having skinny arms. So fair enough, I'll take that on the chin. Uh, just someone getting a bit uppity. I don't understand what you mean when you say tool watch. All watches that tell time are tool watches. You're all right, mate. A watch tells time like a hammer pounds nails. So he does understand what he's saying. He's just arguing for the sake of it. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> this is a good one. I won't call him out, but he's put odd review. <laughs> Maybe because he's a bit odd. <laughs> Thanks very much. He's not my cup of tea. I own the blue a month now and love it. I agree with some of his takes and not others. But overall, not a bad review. <laughs> so it looked like I won him round in the end slightly. Uh, someone, I've gone through an entire review, tried to talk about as much in detail as possible and he's picked up on the fact that I've talked about the box at the beginning and all he's put is, it's leather, not plastic on the box lid. You all right, mate? Jeez, calm down. And this, I've saved the best to last. Someone got up him. He's really pissed off with me. I usually don't waste my time commenting on videos. But your unboxing is so, and he's put S O O O O to make out it's really bad. But your unboxing is so bad that I made an exception. The way you mistreated everything, throwing things away, and your shallow comments just piss me off. <laughs> so I apologise, and if I could just reach out to you, don't give up on me. We could still be friends. Message me again. <laughs> 
Right guys, watch wisdom time. I've taken if you're still here after this time, God knows how long I've been ranting on. My beer's getting warm. So my watch wisdom. I've got two watch wisdoms, shall I treat you to both? Right, so the honeymoon period watch wisdom. So you wear a watch, you get it, you buy it, you love it, you enjoy it. After a while you get bored of it and you think, oh I'm gonna sell it, I'm gonna sell it. No. Don't sell it. If you're unsure about a watch, you're thinking of selling because you're getting bored of it and you've lost a bit of love for it. You could do this with some girlfriends and wives too. Just lock them in a cupboard for a month. The, <laughs> the watch is not the wives. You have to put the wives somewhere else, maybe in a hotel for a month. So put your watch in a box, secure it up and hide it for a month. And then you won't look at it, you won't think about it. And then when you get it back out, you get that honeymoon period all the way back. And if that works, you fall back in love with your watch, great. If not, it's time to flog it because you ain't got in love with it anymore, have you? Oh, genius, that is a good bit of watch wisdom. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. It's been super long. I've got a really good watch wisdom for next week, so I'll save that for now. But thanks for staying around this long, guys. Three months of going, let's keep it going for another... Let's see how long I can go. I had a three-week break in this, it pissed me off. <laughs> right, guys, over and out. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.